Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest of honor, Minister for Health, Mr. Gan Kim Yong. He is accompanied by Professor James Bess, Dean Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine, Professor Eugene So, Chairman of the Center for Healthcare Innovation Co Learning Network, Conference Co Chairs Professor Lionel Lee, Executive Vice Dean Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine, and Mr. David Devarajulu, Executive Director, Center for Healthcare Innovation. Good morning, Minister Gan. On behalf of the organizing committee, we warmly welcome you to the opening ceremony of the inaugural Future Health Conference. The three-day Future Health 2017 conference is jointly organized by the Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine, NTU Institute for Health Technologies, and the Center for Healthcare Innovation, and will explore innovations transforming healthcare. First though, may I welcome the three organizers to say a few words as we embark on this landmark event. On behalf of LKC Medicine, please welcome on stage Executive Vice Dean, Professor Lionel Lee. Professor Lee, please. Good morning, guests of honor, Mr. Gan Kim Yong, Minister for Health, Professor James Bess, Dean of the Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine, Professor Yu Jin So, CEO Tan Tok Seng Hospital, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is the inaugural Future Health Conference organized by the NHG Tan Tok Seng Hospital Center for Health Innovation, the Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine, and NTU's Institute for Health Technologies. We are extremely grateful to you, Minister, to come and grace this occasion as our guest of honor. Welcome to Singapore's newest medical school and our clinical sciences building. And to I must have given an explosive speech. <laughs> yeah. In fact, an explosive welcome. <laughs> and to the health city, Novena. You cannot have missed coming to this morning's event the extent of planning and development of healthcare and academic buildings in this neighborhood. It will soon become a major academic health hub that will not only transform the landscape in this precinct, but I believe the Singapore healthcare system and services. Future Health 2017 is the first major international conference to be held in the heart of this health city, signaling the leading role of this healthcare hub in healthcare transformation in the years to come. We hope that this conference series will help showcase the potential that the, Do the Novena Healthcare City have to offer to the success of Singapore's current and future healthcare initiatives. Future Health 2017 will explore the success of healthcare delivery by, the, by, a, by way of a unique contribution of the opportunities for health workforce transformation alongside the opportunities afforded by new discoveries in medical management and solutions. Future Health 2017, jointly organized by healthcare and academic partners, will bring together the academic expertise in medical and engineering sciences of one of the world's top universities, the Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, 
with the thought leadership in health workforce improvement of one of the region's premier tertiary care hospitals, the Tan Tok Seng Hospital, and its parent national healthcare group. It is indeed very fitting that academia and healthcare join forces. Together, we will co-create the right collaborative environment for innovation and creative thinking to answer the most pertinent clinical questions. We can only do that by working together across disciplines and industries, which is why over the next three days, you won't just hear from the academics and the healthcare professionals, but also experts from the industry too. And David and Russell will tell you a little more about this. And this academic health partnership engendered in Novena Health City will shape Singapore's future health by nurturing good doctors, doing transformative research, exploiting health tech initiative and health care services for Singapore. So in, co in concluding, let me thank the organizing and scientific committees and wish every one of you a thought-provoking and stimulating next few days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lee. Next, please welcome Mr. David Devarajulu, Executive Director of the Centre for Healthcare Innovation. Mr. Gan Kim Yong, Minister for Health, distinguished guests, uh, CHI council members and co-learning partners, friends, welcome to Future Health 2017. When we presented CHI to Minister in November 2014, I didn't tell Minister I was going to share this, um, you know, Minister was telling us in his characteristic way, uh, don't wait for the building, do the work first. A minister will be happy to note we heeded your exhortation and we started work with 27 co-learning network partners from clusters, centres of excellence, academia, key enabling agency and industry to provide thought leadership to transform our workforce and to engage and activate the community we serve. You will hear some of the work that we are doing on the second day of the CHI conference. In particular, we'll be looking at changing the way we work, changing who we work with, changing the way we learn, and learning from change in other industries. I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, invite all of you to visit Level 8 to view some of the great work done in these areas, but better still, engage the people who are doing this work and take away ideas you can use. One other key segment of our conference program is learning from other industries. To change our mental model of care, we do need to look beyond our paradigms. This segment, when presented last year, was very well received. And this year, we will be challenged and inspired to do better by DBS, Facebook, and NCSS. Finally, a few acknowledgements. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to extend our deepest appreciation to our guest of honor, Mr. Gan Kim Yong, and the Ministry of Health, who are the major sponsors for this event. Uh, hint, uh, academia, healthcare leaders, speakers, exhibitors, sponsors, and the selection panel for the National Healthcare Innovation and Productivity Medals, led by our effervescent Deputy Secretary, Zin Woon. And of course, my partners in crime, Lionel and Russell, and the very hardworking secretariat led by Easily and Stephanie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Devarajulu. Last but absolutely not least, please welcome Professor Russell Gruen, Executive Director of the NTU Institute for Health Technologies. 
Thank you, everyone. Guest of honour, Mr Gam Kim Long, Minister for Health. Professor James Best, Dean of the Lee Kong Chan School of Medicine. Professor Eugene So, CEO of Tan Tok Sing Hospital. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, meaningful healthcare transformation requires both new technologies and new ways of doing things, working hand in hand. For example, we'll make more of our workforce with robotics and assistive technologies. We'll enhance community-based care and reduce the need for hospitalisation through better diagnostics and therapeutics. And we'll give patients more control over their own health through information and other technologies. As Director of NTU Institute for Health Technologies, otherwise known as Health Tech NTU, I know how fortunate NTU is to be joining in this mission with the National Health Care Group, well known for providing outstanding health care to the people of Singapore and a leader in healthcare innovation, particularly through its Centre for Healthcare Innovation. As a surgeon at Tan Tok Sing Hospital, I recognise that NHG is also fortunate to have NTU as an academic partner not just because of the Lee Kong Chan School of Medicine, bringing with it an exciting vision for medical education and research, but also because the university brings the breadth and depth in science and technology that makes it one of the world's top-ranking universities. NTU's president, Bertel Anderson, often reminds us that there are really only two types of research, applied and yet to be applied. Health Tech NTU is a new applied research institute that helps connect NTU's 600 strong engineering faculty with the real challenges faced by Singapore's clinicians and patients. Health Tech NTU aims to focus attention on the greatest needs, empowering high performance teams and helping them to deliver solutions that make a difference. At a time when healthcare everywhere faces profound challenges and substantial pressures to innovate, this high potential partnership between Centre for Health Innovation, LKC Medicine and Health Tech NTU is very much needed. We are serious, capable and different. And we come together to embrace the challenge of transforming healthcare and of ensuring Singapore's future health. I trust you will enjoy and be inspired by this great conference. Thank you, Professor Bruin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's welcome our guest of honour, Minister Gan Kim Yong, to deliver his address. Minister, please. Colleagues and friends, distinguished guests and speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. It is my great pleasure to join you this morning at Future Health 2017, Innovations Transforming Healthcare. The care needs of Singaporeans have grown rapidly in recent years due to our aging population, higher chronic disease incidents, and rising public expectations. On the other hand, medical knowledge and technologies are also advancing, bringing about new possibilities in how we prevent, diagnose and treat diseases. To help Singaporeans enjoy good health and quality health care amidst these challenges, we have embarked on three key shifts. Beyond health care to health, to help and support Singaporeans live healthier lives. Beyond hospital to community, so Singaporeans can receive care in the community and nearer their homes and beyond quality to value to ensure that our healthcare system is effective in providing Singaporeans with good care at affordable costs and in a sustainable way. But we cannot make these changes alone. Everyone has a part to play. Each individual has a responsibility to take care of our own health and to care for the well-being of our families. 
Healthcare providers are also partners in our healthcare journey. In particular, our healthcare workers who work very hard and sacrifice much to take care of our health. But beyond our frontline staff, there are many others who keep our systems running smoothly. Our administrative and operations staff, including our cooks, storekeepers, technicians, porters, cleaners, and many more. Let me thank them for their dedication and contributions to our healthcare system. There is yet another group of partners, our researchers and entrepreneurs in academia, startups and industry, who come up with new technology innovations, smart systems or medical devices which facilitate our daily work, making, our more, making us more productive and deliver better care to our patients. We need to bring all these parties together, patients, providers, researchers and innovators, so that we can successfully make the three key shifts which I mentioned earlier and transform healthcare for the future. This conference is timely as it brings together all the important stakeholders in the pursuit of this important goal. But beyond this conference, we need a plan to map out and coordinate this broader healthcare ecosystem development. Towards this end, the Ministry of Health has been working with the manpower and economic agencies to embark on the Industry Transformation Map, or ITM, under the auspices of the Future Economy Council. The ITM is a collaborative effort of a healthcare family, our union partners, economic agencies, Skills Future SG, and Workforce Singapore. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the co-chair of the Essential Domestic Services Subcommittee, Senior Minister of State Chi Hong Tat and Ms. Mary Liu, and members of the committee, healthcare industry partners, and the union for their strong support and contribution to the healthcare ITM. This is truly a tripartite effort. Today, I'm happy to share with you a few key thrusts of the healthcare ITM that sets out three important focus areas. First, building a strong local core through jobs and skills development. Today, the healthcare workforce includes doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, as well as support staff and senior care providers to our support staff and spends across multiple sectors, from primary care to nursing home and senior care providers to our IQ hospitals and specialty centers in both the public and private sectors. Given the growth in our healthcare needs, we can expect demand for healthcare manpower to continue to grow. I welcome more Singaporeans of all ages to join our growing healthcare sector. In particular, we hope to see more people taking up nursing as a career. We have already put in place numerous schemes to promote the nursing profession. As care needs shift to the community, we have launched a community nursing scholarship in July this year to develop leaders in community nursing. We will also open up more training pathways to facilitate mid-career PMETs to join nursing and make it easier for community nurses to upskill. Across the system, as our care needs change, upgrading the skills of our healthcare manpower becomes even more critical. We will be developing skills frameworks for nurses, allied health professionals, pharmacy technicians, and support care staff by the end of 2018. So whether young or old, fresh school leavers, mid-career Singaporeans, or non-practicing healthcare professionals, we will help you with training and development to take on meaningful and fulfilling careers in healthcare. The second pillar of the ITM is enhancing productivity to enable healthcare workers to work smarter. As the sector continues to grow with a smaller local workforce, it is not sustainable to simply add more and more staff. In the hospitals, we want to help our nurses reduce time spent on areas such as inventory management, documentation, food services, and patient transport, so that more of their time can be spent on patient care. People play a crucial role in productivity movements. 
Later today, we will be recognizing the efforts of seven winning teams of healthcare professionals as they receive the National Healthcare Innovation and Productivity Medals. They serve as an inspiration to all of us that even as we address the patient needs of today, we are also creating the new healthcare of tomorrow. The final pillar is catalyzing innovation by working with our service providers, industry partners, educational and research institutions, and Singaporeans to develop tomorrow's solutions. Here I'm glad to see that ASTAR, National Healthcare Group, Spring Singapore, and Biotech Connection have come together to organize the recent Open Innovation Challenge in Healthcare, which aims to foster clinician industry collaborations in innovation and shorten time to market of healthcare solutions. I understand the winners will be sharing their learnings and experience this afternoon at the conference. Together, these three pillars will help transform our healthcare sector to better ensure we achieve our Beyond Healthcare 2020 vision. When we work on transforming healthcare to provide better care to Singaporeans, one key enabler is the use of IT through digitization and closer connections among healthcare providers. In 2011, we introduced the National Electronic Health Record System to bring together clinical summary records from different care providers, enabling information to be shared across providers for enhanced patient safety and facilitate care integration. Today, this is even more important with an increasing number of patients suffering from multiple medical conditions requiring team-based care. Patients will benefit from NEHR when their doctors and care teams are able to access their key medical history when necessary and work across settings to provide them with coordinated, holistic and safer care. This is particularly important during emergencies. Let me give you an example. There was a case where an unconscious man was brought in by ambulance to the Tan Tok Seng Emergency Department. A CT scan revealed bleeding inside his brain. The patient was unable to communicate and no family contact information was available. The attending doctor, Dr. Charmaine Manuiz, pulled up his medical records in the NEHR. She found that he was recently prescribed an anticoagulant for his heart condition. This drug has the effect of reducing the ability of the person's blood to clot. With this information, Dr. Charmaine was able to prescribe the appropriate treatment that helped the patient recover quickly. This is just one of many examples. The NEHR has the potential to save lives and enables significantly better integrated care across the various healthcare institutions. Today, over 1,100 healthcare providers across public and private care settings have access to the NEHR. Last month alone, over 1 million patient searches were made on the NEHR. However, while access has been growing significantly over the years, more can be done, especially in encouraging private healthcare providers, GPs, private hospitals and specialists to contribute data to the NEHR. Patients can only realize the full potential of the NEHR if the data is comprehensive. And for NEHR data to be comprehensive, every provider and healthcare professional needs to contribute relevant data to it. Ministry of Health therefore intends to take the next ma major step for the NEHR to require mandatory data contribution by all licensees, such as healthcare providers and laboratories, so as to improve data comprehensiveness for better patient care. We plan to introduce legislation next year to do this. We have consulted many in the healthcare sector on this. Healthcare professionals and patients alike are supportive as it enables care continuity and patient safety. However, we recognize that some care providers may face challenges and they may have concerns. MOH will help them. And the Ministry of Health will be increasing support for contributions to the NEHR. We will be providing clinical and technical expertise as well as financial support to help healthcare providers make the transition. First, we will organize workshops and focus groups 
among different stakeholders over the next few months to better understand their concerns and how we can help them contribute to NEHR. We will also run a series of technical workshops for IT vendors of clinical management or medical records software to help them meet the data requirements. Second, we will make online resources available for providers and vendors to get advice on how to contribute data to the NEHR, where to seek assistance and how to access the support need provided. Third, we will provide an early contribution incentive to encourage early adoption of NEHR before the legislative requirement takes effect. This will help healthcare providers and labs defray part of the cost associated with enhancing their IT system to be NEHR ready. As this is an incentive to encourage early adoption, only early birds that start contributing medical data to the NEHR will receive the funding. We have set aside a budget of $20 million for this. Our healthcare agency, the Integrated Health Information System, or IHIS, will work with healthcare providers and labs to provide this support and funding from today. Healthcare providers and professionals have also given other feedback, such as system security and safeguards. We will certainly work with healthcare providers, professionals, and other stakeholders in the coming months to see where we can further strengthen and refine. Ladies and gentlemen, the transformation of our healthcare ecosystem and workforce is a journey. It is a journey that we need to take together as leaders, educators, researchers, industry partners, healthcare workers, patients, caregivers, as well as individuals. Only if we share the same vision of future health can we lay a strong foundation for better skills and better work for our healthcare professionals and deliver better care for Singaporeans. I congratulate the organizing committee for putting together a successful and thought-provoking program, and I wish all of you a fruitful three days of co-learning from one another. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Next up, we will be presenting the National Healthcare Innovation and Productivity Medals. Organized by the Ministry of Health, the annual National Healthcare Innovation and Productivity Medals, in short, the National HIP Medals, provide an opportunity for healthcare and community care institutions to acknowledge, showcase, and celebrate excellence in healthcare innovation and productivity. The medals recognize teams who achieve excellence in three award categories, care redesign, automation, IT, and robotics innovation, and workforce transformation. The National HIP medals are sponsored by the Ng Teng Fong Healthcare Innovation Program and managed by the Tan Tok Seng Hospital Community Fund and Center for Healthcare Innovation. 40 submissions from more than 16 Singapore-based healthcare and community care organizations and healthcare providers were received. The applications were assessed by a distinguished panel of judges, chaired by Ms. Teo Zin Wun, Deputy Secretary, Development, Ministry of Health, and comprising productivity champions within and beyond healthcare in Singapore. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all the judges. <laughs> to qualify, all teams had to demonstrate at least six months of improved productivity through measurables such as time savings for staff, cost savings, cost avoidance, improved care outcomes, and many more. The award comprises two best practice medals in each of the three categories and one Excellence Champion Medal. The Excellence Champion Medal is awarded to the team that has demonstrated exceptional innovation and productivity in more than one category. There were many excellent projects that the organizations have embarked on, but only seven project teams have been selected to receive the awards. Before we celebrate our winners on stage, we have a short video showcasing their work. So please sit back and enjoy.
Singapore's healthcare system is facing the needs of an aging population and an increased prevalence of long-term complex health conditions. Our healthcare and community care institutions are determined to innovate and change to provide our population with better quality of life and health outcomes at a sustainable cost. Through care redesign, smart systems and technologies, and workforce redesign, we better deliver value through innovation and productivity. So the Hip Fracture Unit is basically an integrated practice unit with a transdisciplinary approach. The team seeks to bring better care to patients with fragility fractures through the implementation of systematic protocols and through continuous improvement efforts. Coming up with the transdisciplinary team in itself is a new initiative locally. It brings together various individuals from different departments to work as a team. The team has come together and is able to provide effective care even for medically complex older people undergoing surgery. With the team continuous improvement, the average length of stay has been steadily reducing over the years. So the new model of care has enabled the team to facilitate early surgery, reduce medical complications as well as to plan for early discharge. As a team, the morale is high and the communication amongst team members is very good. With Tan Tok Sing serving an elderly, frail population, we find that we do have patients who require home placement. So we've started this engagement and value stream mapping project together with the Agency for Integrated Care and three nursing homes in the central region to streamline the referral processes. The AIC nursing home referral team was relocated from EIC HQ to Tan Tok Sing Hospital and here they could access information on the patients and thereby expedite the match and placement of the patients to a suitable bed. We were privileged to have strong support and endorsement from the external organisations, namely the Agency for Integrated Care, the St. Teresa's Home, Rinsu Nursing Home, as well as the Tai Hua Guan Nursing Home and ourselves. To patients, it means they can get their desired placement in a shorter time frame. Now, my team is also able to do on-site assessment of the patient to understand their care needs and to work more effectively with the various parties involved. With the improved and streamlined work processes arising from this VSM, we were able to reduce the number of wait days for placement from more than 70 to 20 over per patient. And with this, we were able to save 25,000 acute bed days. In line with the recognised direction to have a single point consolidated outpatient billing coupled with one queue management system, Tan Tok Seng Hospital initiated a holistic review of the outpatient billing and queue management journey with the goal to make patient experience more seamless and hazard-free. This is the one bill one queue project. The billing process and outpatient journey were analysed simultaneously to harmonise back-end and frontline workflows. Processes were automated where possible, enhancing workflow, removing manual redundancy and reducing billing errors. We reviewed our patient billing and queuing processes from a system level thinking mindset and adopted value stream mapping and design thinking methodology to design the one bill and one queue processes. Now, patients can have their medications ordered with a pharmacy technician or a trained patient service associate at the clinic before paying for both clinic services and medication together through a single SAP system, achieving one bill. An intelligent one queue management system was also built to achieve a single queue number with customised itinerary for patients throughout their day at the hospital. The one bill process has helped to save 25 minutes for every patient coming to Tan Tok Seng Hospital for medication refill. And annually, more than 16,000 patients benefit from this. The project has achieved actualised manpower savings of 12.5 headcounts over the past year, spread across the specialist outpatient clinics, business office and pharmacy. This in turn translates to 509,000 in manpower savings. There is also a cost avoidance of 200,000 for system upgrade arising from process redesign. The Smart 
Bin is an innovative light-guided pick and lock bin system designed to promote drug picking accuracy and reduce the number of medication near misses and errors. It also increases accountability and traceability of the outpatient pharmacy prescription filling process. The system taps on technology to guide users by lighting up and unlocking the correct drug bin when staff scans either the patient drug label QR code for picking or the manufacturer's barcode for drug loading and returns. We have achieved a high degree of accuracy, 99.997% in our process. Pharmacy staff now have added confidence in our medication picking accuracy and spend more quality contact time with patients and their caregivers, linked to a better experience at the hospital. So Smart Bin is designed primarily to reduce wrong drugs picks from a safety standpoint. We now spend less time in locating drugs through light-guided pick and see a reduction in the number of times a medication needs to be repacked. Community Home and Eye Screening Service, or CHESS in short, is an impactful population-based project that transforms community eye care. It aims to increase accessibility of eye care to the elderly and homebound to detect eye conditions early for management. CHESS benefits the patients in increasing medical accessibility to community eye care. It also enables their eye conditions to be diagnosed early and managed in the community, reducing the need for hospital specialist referral. To the staff, they derive a greater sense of professional satisfaction from being empowered to take on a greater role beyond their conventional job scope. CHESS has screened more than 1,200 residents. The majority of them have eye conditions that can be managed by the nurses and optometrists in the community. Only less than 10% of them require hospital specialist referral. This transformation is in line with the Ministry of Health strategy to transform care from hospital to community. Our team sought to streamline the process in order to ensure timely assistance given to patients and their caregiver. And so doing, we are also able to ensure that the productivity of our staff as well as their job satisfaction is able to improve too. For example, we managed to review our financial assistance application process in order to reduce the turnaround time to ensure the application can be submitted sooner. I think this project is innovative in the sense that because of the changes we have made, that allows a more efficient allocation of manpower and also to improve the job satisfaction among our staff. As a social work assistant, I find that I have improved my communication with my patients and I am able to help my medical social workers with more of the financial assistance cases so that the social worker can focus more on other patients with more pressing social issues. Through this project, our medical social workers can now focus their time and energy on more complex cases, which means that around 60% of the cases we see at the Institute of Mental Health. The NUHS Patient Appointment Consolidation Program aims to deliver person-centric, seamless care to patients with multiple comorbidities through a consolidated team-based approach. The principal physician will oversee all aspects of the patient's chronic care needs and their planned appointments with other disciplines may be consolidated to a single visit to the principal physician. Supporting the principal physician is a multidisciplinary team of healthcare workers who coordinate and deliver the care needed by the patient in the hospital, community and home. For years, I noticed that patients are discharged from acute hospitals to community hospitals are given appointments to see many specialists as these patients had multiple medical problems. We decided to offer these patients the options to be seen by a journalist at a one-stop clinic at St. Dukes, where we tried to reconcile their many follow-ups to just one or two. The primary care coordinators also play a critical role. They counsel the patients and provide them with a variety of information, including financial counselling, and present all the various options for the patients to be able to make that best fit them. So this really helps empower patients to make good choices for themselves and empower them to take charge of their health. 
In 2016, we saw a reduction in specialist outpatient clinic visits by about 33%, and we also saw a reduction in hospital length of stay and hospital admissions by more than 50%. This translated into a systems savings of approximately $492 per patient in the course of a year. We're working closely now with the Ministry of Health to see how we can adopt learnings from our early experiences and look to see how we can actually scale the nature of this program more widely. I think as healthcare workers, it's important for us to look out for work improvement projects to improve the care for our patients. And it's okay to take a little bit of risk as well as to make some bold move because when the results are shown, the whole process can be really rewarding. Think out of the box and dare to dream. Engage your management and staff on the ground to get everyone involved. This will generate more ideas and garner more inputs to improve processes better. While the change management process was challenging, having unified goals and creating the climate for change and engaging and enabling our staff were key moves that helped to push the project to success. I would encourage the organisations to be open, break out from their comfort zone and to learn from each other. Be bold in challenging status quo, yet being cautious in taking calculated risks to ensure that care standards and patient safety is not compromised. I think what we've learned um, from this journey is to start with the end in mind. For us as a regional health system, the end is how we can build a healthy and engaged population. One that doesn't have to experience fragmented care even if they have multiple chronic conditions. Never be afraid to challenge the boundaries. Be systematic in your approach, make friends and have a lot of fun. And now, may we invite our guest of honour back on stage to present the National Hip Medals. Minister, please. We have two recipients for the Best Practice Medal in each of the three categories. And we'll be announcing them in no order of merit. The best practice medals in the care redesign category go to Kutek Pwat Hospital for their integrated hip fracture unit Better, smoother, faster and safer care project The second practice model in the care redesign category goes to Tan Tok Seng Hospital for their care redesign by engaging nursing homes through value stream mapping. Next, in the Automation, IT and Robotics Innovation category, the recipients of the Best Practice Medals are Singapore General Hospital for their Smart Bin, Safer, Reliable and Accurate Project. And the second practice medal goes again to Tan Tok Seng Hospital for their One Bill, One Q project.
And for the Workforce Transformation Breast Practice Medals, the first goes to Kutek Pot Hospital for their Community and Home Eye Screening Service, also known as CHESS Project. And the second best practice medal goes to the Institute of Mental Health for their transformation of financial assistance workforce in the Medical Social Work Department. Congratulations to all our Best Practice Medal winners. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Excellence Champion for the National Healthcare Innovation and Productivity Medal is awarded to the team that has demonstrated exceptional innovation and productivity in more than one category. And this year, the award goes to the National University Health System for their NUHS Patient Appointment Consolidation Program. Our heartiest congratulations for our Excellence Champion Medal and thank you, Minister, for doing the honours. May we invite you back to your seat, please. <laughs> 